My name is Chloe Hill and I am the EGU's Policy Officer and I'm really excited to welcome you to the webinar today that's going to be all about sharing geosciences online, which I'm sure you've heard a little bit about already, but obviously you're interested to learn more. Um, to help explain this concept, what it will involve, why EGU is hosting it and what we're aiming to do, and also how you can participate. We have two excellent speakers. Our first speaker is Alberto Montanari, who is the EGU's president. And as president, he has overview of pretty much everything that the EGU does. So he's obviously been very involved in this process. We also have Suzanne Boiter, who is the EGU's program committee chair. Um, and that means that she actually organizes the program um, or helps coordinate the program for the General Assembly every year. And she's also been a really vital player in coordinating the Sharing Geosciences Online Week. Um, before we do get started, a couple of logistical issues. Um, the webinar today will go for about 30 minutes and that will be followed by 15 minutes of question time. So this is where if you have any other questions, you can ask them and we're going to aim to answer as many of them as possible. Um, if there's some questions that we can't get to, you can always email one of the EGU staff members. You can email me, Chloe Hill, um, and you can ask those, those questions that we didn't get to. So that's everything from me. I'm now going to pass over to our first speaker, Alberto. Thank you, Chloe, and thank you everybody for attending today. We really appreciate your support, your contribution and your interest uh, in this uh, share uh, EGU General Assembly online and uh, I'm uh, now going to share my screen given that we have to share geosciences online it's uh, now the time to share my screen and uh, I have a couple of slides uh, that uh, will help me to convey the message that I'm really excited to convey to you today first of all I am uh, of course talking from my home I have been staying at home for already 30 days and so as you I am really leaving this strange period with a strong motivation to connect and a strong motivation to give my contribution to to solve this this challenge that we are experiencing now we all know that it's a global challenge and we really want to contribute in order to make the world after COVID-19 a better world with an improved science. So we want to give the opportunity to all the scientists and researchers to give their contribution to recover from this because this is what we perceive uh, we perceive ourselves uh, in first instance but we can also perceive uh, um, a strong uh, wish by the research community to give uh, their contribution and i think uh, this is uh, something which is really nice in this bad situation so we want to do our best to transform this uh, unfortunate experience in an opportunity. It evolved uh, very quickly, at least uh, uh, for me in, in Italy, in one week we passed from, uh, let's say, some uh, weak concern to a complete lockdown. And it also in EGU, it was very quick. Uh, we had to devise uh, a solution, a new solution in very few days. And now we are seeking also your support to, uh, to improve the solution and uh, to make plans for the future because, because it's not only the General Assembly. There are a lot of activities organized by EGU that we want to bring forward and uh, we want to bring them forward in an, uh, in an improved context. Uh, not only we don't want to suffer from this situation, but uh, we want to get the opportunities because this is uh, our duty. Science must go on. And I think uh, when we talk about science, uh, I refer to science as a whole. This is a global challenge. It's a challenge for all scientists. Now we have the opportunity to gain, uh, again, a renowned public trust. We can really perceive that the public is looking at science now with new eyes and we have to 
make our best to uh, to give back this trust that people has uh, in, in us. And uh, so the first requirement is science must go on. And uh, for this reason, we had no doubt uh, to decide that our general assembly must go on as well with the concept that we had to devise very quickly with the concept that we want uh, to be innovative. We got in touch also with sister associations and uh, to some extent with the community to devise a new concept, which I think it is something that we want also to be a model for the future, because the future is of course uncertain to the current situation, but in any case, uh, the future, as I said, must be an improved one. So we want to support worldwide connection and networking by giving the uh, to people the opportunity to connect by meeting also what are our uh, uh, traditional principles in EGU, equality of opportunity, open access and transparency, uh, bottom-up approach in line with our founding concept. So the support of the community, again, it's extremely important and uh, diversity, equality, and inclusiveness, and also compliance with the EGU code of conduct that was uh, recently revised. So th these were the driving principles that guided us uh, in uh, elaborating, uh, conceiving uh, the new concept uh, of the online general assembly that Suzanne is going to present. We could benefit from our previous activities. Uh, we made, uh, I think, uh, uh, important step forward in the past to green our meetings. And also we were launching our new repository, EGUSphere. EGUSphere is meant to be a place where any contribution submitted to EGU will be collected, a place where any contribution can be discussed. And this was something that was conceived last year. Of course, we had no idea of this emergency, but we realized that we had to promote online interaction as a greener way of networking, as a forward-looking way for uh, overcoming barriers uh, to physical interaction. And I think that today this concept of uh, a repository which is open for discussion is uh, really something that is uh, essential, something that you want to profit from. This is a repository which we lost uh, our discussion papers, uh, we lost preprints, pre but it will also host the abstracts submitted to our events and in particular the General Assembly with the discussion alongside with the presentations. So abstract and presentations can be discussed here. And this uh, is uh, uh, what led us uh, to elaborate uh, the concept for the General Assembly. The General Assembly will be focused on the two lines of discussion that uh, Suzanne is going now to present. I just want uh, to, to thank you once again and uh, to really invite you to attend this General Assembly because your attendance will be a way to contribute uh, to recovery from this situation. It's a contribution to the scientific community. Your attendance is very meaningful. And then it's a contribution to society as a whole. So Suzanne, please, uh, I'm now sharing my, my screen and I give the word to you. So what I aim to do is to explain our concept. And I will mainly do that by uh, using the websites that show what the possibilities are for authors, conveners and attendees from now until the end of May. So when, when we had to cancel the, um, the General Assembly in, in Vienna, it was immediately clear for us, as Alberto already said, that we, we had to offer it activities online. Um, and we felt it was our responsibility to ensure that, that all the science, all the apps that had been submitted to the General Assembly could be presented and shared and that all the authors and conveners could participate across different time zones. Um, and in a way that it would be accessible on that um, in terms of bandwidth, for example, because we're not all on, on the latest version uh, of uh, broadband, um, but also for any of our colleagues with hearing or visual difficulties. Um, and we had to come up with a concept that would work for all presentation types because we had already accepted the abstract um, as an oral or a poster um, or a pico. 
So, so these were our considerations when we um, started working on sharing geoscience online um, just a few weeks ago. Um, and it's been an interesting couple of weeks, um, but we're very excited with what we can offer. There's been a tremendous effort by the EGMITI, by Council, by our conference organizer Copernicus, by the EU office. Um, and I cannot promise that we've got the perfect concept. Um, we're still developing many aspects, and that also means that you will see changes on the website. And, and I would invite you to, to regularly visit our websites to, to see um, the new concepts, the new activities we're bringing online, the new questions that we've answered. Um, but I do hope that, that really many of our authors and conveners and participants will join us um, in, in this big experiment that we're putting together of bringing activities for a meeting of our size online. And to put that a bit in perspective, in 2019, um, in Vienna, we had over 16,000 abstracts and over 16,000 participants. So it's, it's a large event. So what is our concept? Um, very brief, in a nutshell, we are inviting authors to upload presentation materials and re receive feedback on those um, from the beginning of this month until the end of May. Um, we also invite conveners, authors and attendees to discuss materials during um, a live chat. Um, and we invite everyone to participate in union symposia, great debates, some short courses and more activities. And I'll explain um, a bit more about these points um, using the website. And as Alberta mentioned, we also hope that EDU can gather experience um, from sharing geoscience online with bringing activities online. So one crucial thing is that our concept depends on your active participation. It, it's made for and by authors and conveners um, and attendees. So we can only do this if, if everybody um, is going to help us. So I will now um, share a different screen with you because I will go to the websites um, and show you the, the different possibilities for authors and conveners and attendees um, using the website materials. So the point of entry, um, let me put this here. I cannot seem to, yeah. So the point of entry for, for sharing to your science online um, is this page here. Um, and I would just like to, as, as an aside, like to say that any of the links um, that I'm going to show you, they will be at the end of the PowerPoint and we will be sharing the PowerPoint. So you can either just click along with me or, or just at the end, um, when you get the PowerPoint, you can find the links there. So in this site has information uh, specifically for, um, for authors, um, for conveners and for attendees and, and for our regular scientific sessions and for our other activities. But before I go into a bit more detail for, for the, um, the authors and conveners, um, one important concept is that for sharing geoscience online, we turned all our presentations into so-called displays. Um, so we no longer have orals or posters or conveners, or, or, or because, <laughs> um, but instead we have something that's called a display. And that means that every abstract has the same presentation format in sharing to your science online. Um, and you can see that when you go, for example, um, to a session. So here I'm just bringing, going into our program um, and I could select, I will select, inter and transdisciplinary events. And then you, you can now see that from these sessions, they all have displays. So if I click here, the old, all the abstracts are then listed um, and they are numbered consecutively and they've all got the D for display now. So if I go back again to the sharing geoscience online starting page, um, and we will look specifically into what the options are for abstract authors. So here are um, the possibilities for authors. So all authors submitted an abstract and the abstract received the DOI um, and it's published material under a Creative Commons license. Now, what we now do is we offer the possibility to upload presentation materials with your abstract. Um, and these presentation materials will be directly linked to your abstract and they will share the same DOI. Now, what are these materials? So, they, they can be anything at all that will help an author highlight the points that they want to make with their abstract. So this can be one 
or more figures, a few slides, um, an animation, a PDF, a map, an equation, anything at all. So the only constraints are that it has to be one file, it has to be below 50 megabytes, so to allow fast download. Um, and we ask you to think about formats, so that the format of your file works across different platforms. So rather PNG than TIFF, um, PDF is fine, MP4, things like that. So we have a presentation upload recipe that, that gives you much more detail of, um, of the steps to take to upload your materials. We really try to keep this as, as easy and straightforward as possible. So EDU is um, an advocate of open access to scientific research. And therefore, in principle, we assume that your presentation materials are like your abstract under a Creative Commons license. But if this is not possible for you, then you can indicate another copyright. So you can reserve the copyright to yourself, for example. Now, let me show you how this works. So you just click the presentation upload button. You will be asked to log in. I've already logged myself in. And you will see a list of your active abstracts. Um, then there's further information on the license and copyright agreement. And then here, you can just upload materials. I will certify that yes, I've read the certification section. I will distribute on the Creative Commons license. Um, and then here you can choose the file to upload. And then the bottom right, you choose whether you upload and allow discussion or you upload without discussion. And these steps are also indicated on the presentation upload recipe. Now, you can revise your presentation materials. You can make as many versions as you want. Um, and if you opt into to the discussion, the discussion will be on a certain version. Um, and the, the versions and the discussion are archived in that way. Now, this discussion, um, anyone can contribute to open commenting. But what we do ask is that people log in with their Copernicus user ID. So commenting is by name. Um, the discussion is open from the beginning of this month until the end of May, and it will be archived online. So now I will try to show you um, one example of, of how this actually works. So if we go, um, let me see, I have to open a new tab. We go again to the program. Um, and of course, I've already looked at which abstract already has some comments. So if, if an, an abstract has, has uploaded um, presentation materials, this icon appears. And if there's a comment, um, then this icon appears. Um, and then we, we can open the abstract itself. We can go to the discussion. Um, and then you can see the entire HTML abstract. Um, the presentation version, um, a contributed comment, and an auto comment. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back again um, to the site with the materials for authors. So, so we offered authors the possibility to upload presentation materials and to opt into commenting, which is active over two months. Now, in addition, during the week of sharing geoscience online, between 4 and 8 of May, we open a chat channel for a scheduled session. Um, and and what, what we have in mind here is that um, anyone can participate. So the chat is not by name, but of course people can put their name. Um, it's not recorded because we really want to stimulate an open discussion. Um, there's not live streaming, but what we encourage is that people look in advance at the uploaded presentation materials, at the abstracts, and that they then together discuss, uh, for example, open questions in, in their field. Um, now, how this looks like, for example, is if you look in the program, um, you can see for a session that there is, for example, here you can see there is a chat uh, scheduled. And this link will become active 15 minutes before the chat and it will remain active about half an hour after. We're going to make a how-to um, in more detail about how the chat works, um, but we're still selecting the software, so, so that is not there yet. As I said, we're developing um, as we go. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the possibilities for authors. 
So there's, there's two ways of receiving feedback and of giving feedback. It's on your uploaded presentation materials through the commenting um, and it's through the live chat during the week between 4 and 8 of May. Now all of this um, we can only do with the help of our conveners and, and we really hope that the conveners will help us making sharing geoscience online an, an active event um, because finally we, we depend on you to make this work. So what, what we kindly ask you is, is to moderate the chats. So like you would in, in Vienna, the General Assembly convene your session and chair it. And we're here asking that you, you chair or you chairperson and moderate the chat. Um, we kept as much as possible the original time of your session. And large sessions are scheduled in blocks of about 30 displays. So it, it should be a manageable um, number of abstracts during the one hour and 45 minutes of your scheduled chat. Now, what, what we sort of could see what the role is when, when you're moderating a chat is that you can introduce your session. You will also get the possibility as convener to upload some materials with your session. So you can, for example, upload some introductory slides that people can look at in advance. Um, you can make sure that all the displays get some attention. You can ask some questions. Um, you can formulate some, maybe some open questions in your field. So, for example, with um, my, my co-conveners on, on a session, we already got together um, and discussed how we're going to do this. And one of our ideas was that we would look at the abstracts and the uploaded materials in advance and see if there's any common points, any um, open questions that emerge in our field. And then we could use this chat to, to bring everybody together and see what, you know, what the discussion can bring us. So as I mentioned before, the chats will not be recorded um, in order to stimulate an open discussion. Um, and yes, we don't have to stop, but one of our wishes is that conveners will really get the role of a moderator. So, so I hope this explains a bit um, of how conveners can help. Um, and, and in a way to, to, to bring the, 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 the General Assembly um, of Vienna convener role into an online convener role. Now, and then of course we're all um, attendees. So, and I would really like to stress that sharing to your science online is open to all. You do not need to register um, and it's free. Mm -hmm. So as an, as an attendee, you, you can um, view presentation materials and you can comment on these presentation materials as long as you log in with your Copernicus user ID and, and just disclose your name. Um, and during the week of sharing geoscience on, online, you can participate in chats. Um, we also have other activities like the Union Symposia, Great Debates, etc. And I will say a bit more about that from the slides. Um, you can also make your personal program like you would for the General Assembly in Vienna. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that instead of individual abstracts, you will be selecting sessions because we do not know when an individual um, abstract is, is scheduled in the chat, of course. Um, and I'll quickly like to point out there's already a, a very nice um, blog on the, the geolog from, from EDU um, on how to plan your week of digital interaction. So I now go back um, to my PowerPoint. So sharing to your science online, um, I've now mainly discussed uh, the regular scientific sessions, but we also aim to bring our union symposia live um, and the great debates um, and hopefully a selection of short courses that are either live or pre-recorded. But we also will have other activities. So for example, for, um, for the General Assembly in Vienna, we had selected um, two artists in residence. Um, they will hopefully become our artists in residence for 21. They've already agreed. But they've also very kindly agreed to be artists online during Share EDU 20. Um, and we would like to invite anybody who has, um, or, or all the artists among us, to, to share their art and science um, using the hashtag Share EDU Art. And please vote in the 2020 photo competition. So the pictures you see here were from the 2019 photo competition. And we will be announcing the 2020 finalists. Um, and then you can vote during the week of 4 to 7, from 4 to 7th of May, and we'll announce the winners um, at the end of the Shared Geoscience Online week. 
So I really hope that you will join us online um, from now on until, um, and especially from between 4th and 8th of May, um, and help us bring um, science together online. Um, okay, so the first question we have is there is still some confusion about whether there will be live presentations like the one that we're having now, or whether it will be more of a, an, an online typing chat. Suzanne, maybe you want to address that one? So we're going to have some live presentations, um, and that is the union-wide events. So the union symposia um, and the, the great debates, and we will have one each day. Um, and you can see them already in the program. Um, in addition, we might run some short courses live as well. Um, but for the rest, we would really like to encourage everyone to use our uh, live text-based chat. We, we have about 700 regular scientific sessions. Um, and with the chat, we, we are able to, to bring, you know, our about 17,000 abstracts online and offer the same feedback opportunity to all. Um, so I really hope that people will, will join us in this pilot experiment that we're running. There was a question about the medal lectures and division meetings. Um, can you address whether they're happening this year? I guess you so, can both so do the that. Medal lectures, um, so all the medal lectures from 2020 um, are, are postponed to 2021. So that means in 21, um, if we have the General Assembly in Vienna, we will be running um, double meta lectures, which is exciting because these, re these are really interesting talks. So, um, but I, I think that gives them um, the best buzz and visibility or, or the, the, on, the on-site experience for, for our medalists. So, so this is why we decided to, to not host the medal talks online, but instead to have them um, in Vienna. They will be, the, the union white medal lectures are also web streamed um, when we're in Vienna. So the division meetings, um, we're looking into this, um, but there will likely be a form of a division meeting. Um, what we're currently thinking of is to, that the division presidents can share materials before, um, and that there will then be um, a text-based chat for feedback by the community. Um. Okay, we have another question here that I've just read about how we intend to avoid online abuse. I also had one question that I'll address asking why the chat, everyone couldn't see the Q&A that's happening right now and only the panelists and the host can see it. Um, that's one of, the, one of the reasons why we've kept the, the question, question and answers private, just in case there is any sort of online abuse going on. It's, I think it's a bit easier to monitor, um, but maybe Suzanne, do you wanna answer that more fully? Um, well, one thing is that we, we, we do ask people um, when they upload materials and all our authors and anyone participating to adhere to the EGU code of conduct. Um, so this, this is explicitly assumed. Any participant is bound by the EGU code of conduct. Um, for, for the comments, uh, that, that is fairly clear because you, you, you log in and you register by name. Um, and th these are also archived. For the chat, um, that's true, you know, we, we, we opted for anonymous and to make it as easy as possible for people to participate. Um, and this is why we're also looking into giving conveners moderator access so that they can, if necessary, block a participant. And I really hope that this will not be necessary. <laughs> Yeah, and so just to confirm, there won't be any need for a Copernicus ID to join any of the sessions, for example. Not for the chat, no. Yeah, yeah, okay, very good. Um, changing tack a little bit now, so far they've mainly been logistical questions, so they've gone towards Suzanne. Um, but Alberto, if you, if you wanna jump in, if you have anything else to add, feel free. Um, they are, okay, another question is, will there be pure networking sessions? For example, join dinner events, virtual coffee breaks, or similar pure social human interaction um, in online events? Now that's a very interesting one. I've been thinking about it. So far we have not, um, but we have been thinking about maybe we could have a late afternoon, early evening to bring some of our events online. Um, yeah, I, I can't promise anything we're thinking about it. I mean, it's been, the last week it's been tremendous. It's been really exciting and it's been really exhausting in bringing everything online. Um, 
but you know, I, I like the suggestion. I can't make a hard promise, but um, apart from that, we're thinking about it. If I may add something on this, uh, it is uh, indeed uh, an issue that we are seriously considering. Uh, and the problem is that uh, we want to make uh, any of the event accessible to everybody who wishes to join it. And potentially, then we have to predict a very huge attendance. So we are uh, trying uh, to identify the solution for hosting the plenary meeting uh, anyway, which is uh, something that is attended by several hundreds of people usually. And uh, indeed, we are also thinking of uh, some social events, uh, which uh, uh, at the same time uh, we need to, to make uh, accessible to everybody. So definitely there is something that is uh, on, in the plate uh, and uh, we will provide uh, additional details later on. Okay, um, and now for a trickier question. Will EGU, will EGU, EGU go back to business as usual after the corona cri crisis or use this as a change for rapid transformation in brackets decarbonization? I, I can say something, Suzanne, uh, in general, and then I'll give you the word to you for, uh, for, um, for comments on the specific of the General Assembly. As I said, uh, uh, we want to transform this crisis in an opportunity, and for sure the opportunity is to evolve towards a greener model for, for scientific activities. We were already working on it with EGUSphere and uh, with uh, greening the General Assembly efforts. Uh, so I'm, uh, I think that uh, indeed this could be the opportunity to move forward that way, which is uh, pretty easy for uh, small events. Uh, for the General Assembly is a different story, but Suzanne will say something. And uh, I'm not saying that uh, this, will be, uh, this will be the model, the model that we use this year, of course, will evolve. Uh, so this is uh, the first experiment that was also shaped by the urgency of uh, finding a solution in one week, as I said, I think uh, we can take this opportunity to work together for definitely converging uh, towards a new model, not only for research, also for education, because I think uh, this event helped us to discover what we can do uh, without physical attendance. On the, other, on the other end, I want to point out that uh, I still believe that a physical meeting has uh, some advantages that we have to preserve. Yeah, and I, I would like to add on to that because I think one of the reasons, I mean, we've been thinking a lot about why do people go to conferences and it's because they want to, to show and share the, the work they're doing and to learn from others. And, and parts of these aspects you can definitely bring online, but they also want to meet their colleagues and discuss and, and get to know new people and that that networking aspect of conferences is much more difficult to bring online so so my personal opinion is that there will always be a need to to meet in person but at the same time i think you know the, um, the experiences now with sharing geoscience online will will help us um, in greening the general assembly um, and refining ways like for example with the short courses um, we had 90 scheduled, we're not going to run 90 short courses online, but we will run some and these will be recorded and hosted on EDU's YouTube channel. And in this way we can build a catalogue of, of materials that people can view anytime. So, so, and that will then go beyond the General Assembly. So I think there's a lot we can, we can learn from, from the situation we're in. Okay. Um, okay, so the, I'm just, again, scrolling through the question and answers, and there's a lot of questions, guys, which is great. Really great to see. Um, there's quite a few about the types of, um, the, the types of files that can be uploaded. So what is the recommended format for these displays? For example, is it a PDF, PowerPoint? Is there a particular format that you would recommend? Or on the flip side of that, are there any formats that aren't accepted? Well, I shouldn't say this probably, but I mean, you can, you can upload anything you want within the 50 megabyte file. But, you know, if you upload a format that cannot be viewed on, on different platforms, then of course it's not so useful. So you can upload um, the recommended formats that we have thought of so far would be uh, PowerPoint slides, uh, PDF, 
um, MP4, um, PNG for an image, um, but avoid, for example, TIFF because that doesn't support very well and it's very big. Um, so, so that would be sort of the recommendation. Um, okay, next question. Um, Kirsten from the Iceland Meteorological Office um, isn't allowed to use Zoom because of security issues. Um, now, this has been an issue that we've been hearing about the last week. Um, Suzanne, do you want to do you want to answer this one? That's a tricky one. Um, I mean, at my university, there have also been concerns. Um, but actually, the, the last signals we got from Zoom is that a lot of the issues um, are actively addressed. Um, so, so, for example, my university is considered that we will use Zoom for teaching. Um, it's, of course, very unfortunate if we have um, a platform for a uni symposium great debate that some participants cannot watch. Yeah, I will say that all, all of the webinars that we host, whether it be the great debates, the union symposia, all the short courses, they'll all go on YouTube afterwards. So we're going to aim to upload them on the same day. Um, and so you can always watch them afterwards. It will just be that the Q&A sort of if you want to ask a question, that's what you'll miss out on. Um, so there is always that option as well. And I, I think Zoom, to my knowledge, they have been addressing some of these issues. So maybe it'll be okay in a month, maybe. Um, I think the latest signals I've seen just the last days have been very positive in that respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so there's a question here about the exhibitors. What, an exhi uh, exhi what do exhibitors do in, the place, in, in place of being at the exhibit? They're keen to support this new way of exhibiting. And that is from Marie Springer Nature. I guess Marie's the name. Um, well, very, the very straight answer is that we cancel the exhibition. But um, we, and we just hope that all the exhibitors will, will join us again the next time we're in Vienna. But I also I really hope that exhibitors will, of course, um, help us and join us in, in sharing geoscience online. Um, as, as any attendee, the, we just encourage them to, to participate in the commenting, watching the materials in the chat. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's also a couple here from people who aren't sure whether they can make their allocated session times. So there's um, someone who's concerned they're on the local emergency response teams might for the COVID-19 virus, might not be able to attend the chats. Um, is there some way that EGU can recognise these activities for those working on COVID-19 um, who cannot actually attend their allocated session times? Well, I mean, if, if, if anybody is on the COVID-19 emergency response team, I mean, this takes priority over everything. <laughs> <I would say. laughs> um, but what, what I would recommend in that case is to, to upload presentation materials in advance. Um, and you can add a, an auto comment with it to, to explain a bit more what you had in mind with, with uploading these materials already. Um, and you can invite colleagues to to contribute to the commenting. So you, you can create a bit of buzz around your own abstract in that way. Um, and of course, it's very unfortunate if you plan to participate in the chat in the last moment, it's not possible. But then I would say, um, these things happen. You know? Yep. Um, ah, there's a question here about the short courses. The question is, when will we find out about the short courses? <laughs> I hope as soon as possible. <laughs> We're working hard on it. <laughs> yeah. We, we, I mean, to be honest, we prioritize first bringing the, the about 700 regular scientific sessions online. Um, and now we're working on, on the union supposed to the great debates, the short courses. But I mean, please be assured, we, we're really actively working on the short courses. Mm -hmm. So I hope soon. I also would like to add that uh, some... Uh, uh, a couple of union sessions will focus uh, uh, on their original topic, but uh, by also opening the door to discussing uh, what are the implications for the scientific community of COVID-19. So I think it will be also a nice opportunity to attend these sessions uh, in, uh, in order to, to discuss uh, what, uh, what is our best strategy for the future, to get connected, to continue working uh, in an improved way. So I really invite you to, to consider also these opportunities for discussing of the situation. 
Um, there's actually a couple of questions here about trying to show, for example, 20 displays in a one hour and 45 minute time block. Um, can one of you give a bit more information about how that might work with such little time per display? I mean, it's a good question because we, we haven't tested it ourselves yet. So what we're planning to do is we're going to run um, a trial session um, to, to, to see how this works. We will also then record a trial session to, to give some tips. Um, but I think if you, have, if you have 20 to 30 displays and you have one hour, 45 minutes, I think it's, it's actually, um, it's a good time slot where um, you can find common points between the displays. You can, you can discuss different materials together. Um, and, and I think one hour, 45 minutes for, for a chat is probably already fairly long. And, and I wouldn't really want to, to extend the time. Some, some sessions have two or three of these blocks. So, so that's quite a lot. And, and I think, you know, if, if there is more than, than fits in the chat, then people can return to the, the commenting because this will be active also after sharing Geoscience Online until the end of May. So. Okay. Will all co-conveners have moderator status? It might be too much for one convener to cover all of the displays simultaneously. Yeah, I'll look into that. It's a, it's a good point. It's, it's on our list. <laughs> when looking to download material provided by the authors, the function to download is not at all obvious and took some time to find. Can this be improved to make the material more, vi more visible? I guess that's more of a feedback <laughs> than a question. Yeah. I have to think about that one. Um, Maybe the person asking the question could give some tips as what yeah. they would like to have more visible. Yes. That would help. Yeah, yeah. sure. Sure. Um, so there is in brackets here the small icon after the abstract. Is but the icon too small? Or, apparently, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll also say if you do have any feedback, um, I know Suzanne and Alberto are both ridiculously busy, but if you want to send me an email, policy at egu.eu, um, I can always forward that on to the relevant person, whether it's feedback. Um, I can also help answer questions if you have any questions that we haven't been able to answer today. Um, yeah, you can always send me an email. Yes, yes, that's fine. Okay. Perfect. Okay. There's someone here who is wondering if they can upload a talk um, onto the server at their university and share the link because I don't think 50 megabytes will be enough. Um, they can because you can just... As presentation materials, you can upload a link. So, yep. so yes, you can do this. Um, but I would take into account to make sure that the file doesn't become too large because not everybody who's working from, from home, uh, you know, has very large bandwidth to, to download big files. And th this is why we restrict it to 50 megabytes. Yeah. Okay, um, this is a, a good one here. What can conveners do to encourage authors to engage with sharing geoscience online with materials before the week? slash scheduled sessions. Can EGU provide specific wording? Yeah, because one, one obvious way is to, to contact your authors. So all conveners have access to, to a mail tool um, as, as, as before. So you can log in with your session as convener and then you can email um, all the, the authors of your session and in this way, give them some tips. Um, so what I would do is to, to point them to the, um, the Sharing Geoscience Online web pages that and then the specific session section for authors, um, where there's already a lot of tips. Um, you can even just copy that and put that in the mail. Um, it's, and, and I think it's, it's really a great idea to contact the authors in advance and encourage them to upload materials and participate in the chat. And also as conveners to, 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 to tell um, in advance, what, what your plan is for, for hosting the chat. Um, so I'm going to say second last question. <laughs> Will there be a replacement for the outstanding student poster and PICO presentation contest, given that it is a huge motivation to deliver a good presentation, plus the advantage of a free waiver for next year's registration? Unfortunately not. Um, and, and this is because, we, you know, the presentation is by the chat. And there's, there's no way that, you know, on, on, the, on the basis of, of an anonymous chat that this could be judged. Um, yeah, so 
I'm, I'm very sorry, but the OSPP has been, uh, been cancelled for this year, but will be reactivated as soon as we're reconvening in Vienna. Yeah. Yeah, I also would like to say that uh, even if we converge uh, to a different model, which is not uh, uh, large scale physical attendance, of course, this kind of recognition will continue. And yeah. uh, there was just uh, not enough time now to organize uh, the, the competition in a different way. But for the future, for sure, it is uh, a distinguishing feature that will continue whatever it happens. I mean, even if uh, uh, we have to converge to a full online format, it will be preserved. We just need uh, uh, the time uh, to organize it and the technology is put in place. But for sure, it will continue. Like mentoring activities, uh, any other activity will, will continue, I hope, in an improved manner thanks to the technology. Okay, so. Okay, two more questions. <laughs> there's just too, there's too many good ones. Um, once you upload your presentation, is it possible to modify it? In that case, would a history be shown of how many times the file has been re-uploaded? Yes. So, so you can upload presentation materials and it will be called version one. And then you can revise it and upload a new version. Um, and we will keep the different versions. And this is because maybe in the meantime, somebody already commented on the first version and there's a dialogue there. So the versions and the commenting history will be preserved, but you can absolutely just revise and you can revise also on the basis of the comments that you're receiving. Very okay, cool. Okay, final question is where we find the link to the recording of this webinar. I would like to share it with colleagues that are not connected now. Um, so that is a very good question, Francesca. <laughs> um, it's actually going, I'm going to try and upload this um, webinar. I'll edit it a little bit um, and I'll upload it onto YouTube aiming for tonight. It will then be in the um, newsletter, the EGU newsletter that will go out tomorrow. Um, I'll also include a link in the, the email that you'll get tomorrow as well. So good question. Is there anything else that either Suzanne or Alberto you want to say or end the webinar on? I would just like to say that it's really brilliant to see all the, the people participating in this chat um, and, and the interest in sharing geoscience online. And I just hope that everybody will join us in, in our big pilot experiments that we're currently running. Yes, I also uh, would like to say that uh, as a final conclusion that we had an underlying principle here to give to everybody the opportunity to present uh, by giving uh, equal status, equality of opportunities to all the presentations. And given uh, this uh, driving concept, uh, we devised, we know that it's not easy to discuss many presentations in a limited time, but uh, we devised the two ways uh, of interaction, the discussion and the chat. Uh, I know that uh, uh, also the situation in terms of bandwidth now, it, it's not really, uh, really optimal because uh, all the people are connecting. So we had to devise ways of making this interaction uh, cheap in terms of bandwidth. But if you really think, I can understand that some of you may have the concern that um, uh, your presentation uh, would benefit a lot from some something uh, from seeing your face, something that is uh, uploaded on a video. And the, the suggestion that Suzanne gave to you, like, uh, yes, it's possible to put uh, a video, a short one, I would say, on a repository and link it. So this is something that uh, you may use uh, with your creativity. And uh, really, I think this way of interaction gives ample room to your creativity. And uh, finally, I really want to invite you to join. To join, of course, we are not expecting that all the people stay all the week on the PC, but even in attendance that is uh, uh, in a way not continuous, uh, but uh, concentrated on your interest, uh, it's extremely important, not only for EGU. We are talking here about science. Science and scientific associations in their uh, uh, complete set. So it is really, if you want to do something for helping all of us and society to recover from this and transform this in an opportunity, I think attending at the scientific activities, it's uh, a really very helpful move. So I'm really looking forward to see you there.